بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوه وأكرمني بنور الفه اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم Alhamdulillah, we have tawfiq to continue our study of logic based on introduction to logic by Ayatollah Mutahari. This is a very brief uh, and short introduction to logic, inshallah. Then after finishing this, we would have more detailed discussion. You remember we said the subject matter of logic is Mu'arraf and Hujjat. Al Mu'arraf wal Hujjat. And we said Mu'arraf is a conception, tasawwur, that we use for understanding another tasawwur. Because we said tasawwur is either badihi or nadari, self evident or it's not self evident need of a speculation if it is badi we understand it if it is not badi we use something that we know more to better understand what is not understandable and that is mu'arraf all the definitions fall under mu'arraf we said we have had the tam had the naqis rasma tam rasma naqis all those things then Hujja. Hujja means argument. And this is for tasdiqat, for propositions. Again, tasdiqat are either badihi or nadari. If they are badihi, self evident, we don't need any other argument. If they are not badihi, we have to use another proposition which is known to us in order to understand this proposition okay there are two different types of reasoning that we can have <coughs> here i am a little bit expanding on what is in the book but not too much but uh, because i want to show you the connection between this discussion and the previous discussion so we need reasoning we need a stedlal, we need argument. Okay? So are we talking about tasavurat or tastigat? Tastigat. Tasavurat finished. We are talking about tastigat, propositions, statements. For tastigat, if they are in need of reasoning, there can be two different types of reasoning. One is what we call al istedlalul mubashir. And the other is al istadlal ghayrul mubashir. Istadlal, which is mubashir, means it is direct. Okay? That is when you have some proposition which is very similar to the proposition that you want to know very close to that mawzu mahmul subject predicate are the same or just opposite and the only difference is the order of subject and predicate or whether it is mujabe or salabe kulliye or juz'iye that is what we discussed when we talked about propositions which are contradictory or which are opposite or you know mutadakhilan or dakhilatan taht al tabat all those things that i told you to work on it as practice that when for example you say kullu a is b okay from this you can understand that ba'zu b is a do you need any other thing no from the first proposition, you come to the second proposition. This is called al-istidlalul mubashir. 
basically you have one proposition but from that proposition you can come to a second proposition how is it this possible because you are using the same subject and predicate but maybe you just change the order maybe or you know salve kulliye juziye this type of thing cham and kaif but we have another type of reasoning and that is called al istidlal ghayr al mubashir this is indirect and that is when you want to know one proposition but in order to know that you have to find maybe two propositions and put them together and make a decision about this one okay for example a very famous example you know in many books in mantaq is for example uh, socrat is a human being socrates yeah socrat socrates is a human being and every human being is mortal so socrates is mortal so you wanted to prove socrates is mortal but you didn't know that for example anything directly about socrates and mortal so that you can just do ax mustawi or ax naqis or you know this type of things so in your mind you had to look for two propositions which are known to you and then you can bring them together and clarify this issue for example you knew that surat is human being you knew that and you knew that every human being is mortal so you say socrates is mortal or iron is a metal kind of metal and every metal with heat is extended yeah if you expose any metal to heat it's big you know it's extended its size becomes bigger so we say iron is metal and every metal with heat is extended so iron is extended with heat so you put two sentences two propositions together and come to the conclusion that iron is extended with temperature okay so tonight inshallah we want to discuss this type of reasoning which is called what al istidlal ghayr al mubashir indirect reasoning indirect argument is it clear so you understood the difference between this discussion and when we were just talking about mutanaqizatan or mutazaddatan or those type of things okay when it comes to understanding something that we don't know whether it is tasawwur or tasdiq our mind starts a process yeah when you want to understand something that you don't know what do you do your mind has to work what is that action of mind called no the action of mind in order to understand something that you don't know based on what you know thinking that's fikr yeah we had fikr before he said what is the definition of fikr ah harakat al-dhihn min al-murad ila al-mabadi wa min al-mabadi ila al-muradi so what is your question that's the beginning you look at the question then you go back to your mind to see among the things that you know is there anything that match this you form an argument for example or you form a definition because fiqh is for tasawwur and tasdiq both and then you come back and clarify this issue so you have two movements of mind okay so it's a return journey not single journey 
It's a return journey. Mind goes from the question to the information that has, finds something appropriate, forms a definition or an argument, and then comes back and clarifies this. Okay? This is called fiqh. So fiqh can be for tasawwur or for tasdiq. When it is for tasawwur, it produces what? Mu'arif. When it is for tasawwur, it produces mu'arif, ta'rifat. Had tam, had naqis, rasm tam, rasm naqis. When it is for tasdiqat, it produces one of the three things. Qiyas, tamthil, or istiqra. Okay? We have three types of reasoning. Of course, as you remember, we said in Estadlal Ghayr al Mubashir. What is the difference between these three? If you want to understand it easily, Giyas is when mind finds something more general and apply it to the case. So in, he, in the thinking process, you find a sentence. For example, you want to know whether Socrates is mortal or not whether iron is extended by heat or not, you go to your mind and try to find something more general that if you apply it to this, the conclusion would be that first sentence. Okay? So you go to your mind to see if you can find anything that would be more general than Socrates is a human being. Or Socrates is immortal, sorry. Something more general. That is, human beings are mortal. So, al ghiyas harakatu dhihn min al kulliya ila al juz'i. From something which is more general to something which is narrower, which is more specific. Kullu insanin fanin. Every human being is mortal. Kullu insan and fanin. You apply to Socrat because Socrat is also a human being. You say, therefore, the result is that Socrat is funny, is mortal. Is it clear? Harakat al-zehn min al-kulli il al-juz'i. Min al-kulli il al-juz'i. Okay? Because this is the way of reasoning. Of course, first, Zen is faced with a Juz'i question, but goes to the information which is stored and finds something Kulli and applied. But we have another thing, which is quite opposite. We call it Estagra, induction. Induction is when you want to understand something Kulli. And you look for many, many juz'iyat, many, many particular things to form a general proposition. For example, you want to know whether water boils in 100 degree. Okay? So every water boils in 100 degree. Is this correct or not? What do you do? Pardon? Ah, you boil water in different places, different types of water, yeah? And if you see that always water boils in 100 degree, you say every water boils in 100 degree. Of course, inshallah later you would see, we have questions about induction. Because maybe water that we have boiled and experienced boils in 100 degree. Maybe not every water is like this. If you go on top of mountain and there is less pressure, then it's boiling you know, sooner. Or if you have more pressure, it's like pressure, you know, pot, 
it poisoned you know, later. So there are lots of questions. The late Ayatollah Muhammad Baqir al-Sadr has an independent book on al-ususul mantaqiyya lil istiqra logical foundations for induction and he wants to show how we can use induction in science and other areas in theology even and there's lots of discussion about this so the second type of reasoning in direct reasoning is to move from juz'iyat to kulliyah. Another form of indirect reasoning is to go from juz'i to juz'i, or you can say from something similar to it's similar. For example, you know Zayd has a condition. And then you say, Amr is also like Zayd. So Amr must also have the same condition. So you extend the predicate for one thing to another thing which is similar. It's not min al kulli il al juz'i or min al juz'i il al kulli. It's from, for example, juz'i to juz'i. Or sometimes can be even from kulli to kulli, but just by the power of similarity. It's called tamthil. In fiqh and usul al fiqh, we call it qiyas. Means just by comparison, we want to say they are similar. Okay? In English, we call it analogy. So, as you see, this is not logical. You cannot extend the predicate of something to its similar. Or in fact, you cannot extend the ruling, the hook, for one thing to another thing. Yes, we have something which is different. Inshallah, in fiqh and usul al-fiqh, you study or you have studied. We have qiyas al That's different. We have al-qiyas mansus al That's different. If it is just similarity, it doesn't work. Because you think they are similar, but there might be lots of differences. You know, in fiqh, you know, we have hadith, you know, about... Riyas cannot work. Yeah? You, you know these discussions. But al ulaviya is different. For example, Quran says with respect to your parents you have to be very kind and benevolent. And if one of them or both of them become very old and dependent, you cannot say something which would be an expression of being bored with them or fed up with them. Yeah? لا تقول لهما أف. From this we can understand that you cannot نعوذ بالله سور at them or نعوذ بالله beat them. This is called قياس الأولوية. This is different from قياس which is not permissible. This is حجة. Because if you cannot say the least of words which can be disrespectful, how can then you, you swear at them? Or how can you beat them? This is certainly agreeable. But just to be similar, that is not agreeable. 
This is called al awlawiya Qiyas al awlawiya we accept. Or al mansusu bil illa. If legislator, the lawmaker, has mentioned specifically what is the reason behind this legislation. And then you know that the same reason applies to another case. So you can extend the ruling to this case. This is not qiyas which is not permissible. Okay? For example, in our day-to-day -day life, you go to a doctor and doctor says, don't eat lemon because it is sour. Suppose you have some problem. Doctor says, don't eat lemon because it is sour. And then you have question. There is an orange which is sour. Can I eat it or I should not eat it? What do you understand as a rational person? Pardon? Not to eat. Why? Because he said, La ta'akul al lemon. Mentioned the reason. This sour, to be sour was the problem. So anything which is sour, then you have to avoid. On the other hand, if it is sweet lemon, it's not a problem. This is why in Usul al Fiqh we say, Al illatu imma mu'ammimatun aw mukhassasa. Al-illatu imma mu'ammimatun aw mukhassasa. Means when you know the reason behind the legislation, then based on that, you can extend or you can limit. When you know that the reason for a prohibition of lemon is to be sour, you can extend it to other things which are sour and you can narrow it down so that it would not include lemon which is not sour. Okay? It's very important. Al-illatu imma mu'ammimatun aw mukhassasa. Either extends or limits. Because legislation is based on illa. But this is when you know the illa. If you don't know illa, you cannot do this. Okay? Even if you guess what is illa. For example, for a woman who is divorced, she has to keep idda. She has to observe idda. You cannot say Ed is obligatory just because we want to know whether she is pregnant or not. And therefore, if by some techniques today or some tests we can realize that if she, uh, she is not pregnant, then doesn't need Ed. This is not working. Why? Because who told you that this is the Ella? This can be hikmah, not illa. There's a big difference between hikmatul hukm and illatul hukm. Okay? Illatul hukm means that's the basis of legislation. Hikmah is something that we use to understand better, to get an idea, but not definitely. We can say, Wallahi, this is the reason. Okay? Do you understand? So, in fiqh, we don't accept qiyas except when it is bil or mansusul illa. The same qiyas in fiqh is called in mantiq tamthil. It can be used for ahkam shari, when it is in fiqh and usul discuss, it can be used for other things. For example, many people make this mistake, for example, they see someone makes a mistake, for example, then they think people who are similar also should do the same. For example, if one Muslim does something bad, they think the other Muslim also would do it the same. Or if 
we may do the same thing. You know, if we see one person who is not from our group does a mistake and we see another person from the same group, we think, oh, he's doing the same mistake. This is called tamthil. You are generalizing. Okay. There are three types of al-istidlal wa ghayr al-bubashir. Al-ghiyas wa tamthil wa al-istiqraar. Now let's focus on Qiyas. But before we focus on Qiyas, to make everything that we said so far clear, Ayatollah Mutahari makes few points. It's a kind of conclusion for some of the things we have discussed. He says, in order to understand new things and to collect data and information sometimes we just observe our mind doesn't need to do any extra activity for example when you see something when you touch something you smell something okay do you need to argue no it's just through your sense through your perception Sometimes you have to argue. When you have to argue, then this is when you need mantak. Why you study mantak? Pardon? To learn how to argue. Uh -huh. To learn how to make sound argument. Yeah? And if there is a false argument, you can identify. So you would not be making mistake and you would not be misguided by other people who make, you know, false claim. And, you know, then they have a kind of argument which is fallistic, which is problematic. In Estadlal, Ghayr al-Mubashir, mind should have few things to be able to put them together and come to a new conclusion. And these have to be related to each other. Can you put few propositions which are totally irrelevant to each other and come up with a conclusion? No, you cannot. Yeah, you have to be careful. You know, sometimes people keep talking, talking, talking and about things which are not very related. And when you are tired, they make the conclusion. So you have to be careful. You know, say thank you very much, but please tell me what's the relation between what you said and this. So sometimes just people want to tire you. You have to be careful. Okay. There must be a relation. And then we go to the discussion about Qiyas. We have two types of Qiyas. Okay. Al Qiyasul Iqtirani Wal Qiyasul Istithnai. Al Qiyasul Iqtirani, Al Qiyasul Istithnai. Al Iqtirani comes from Qarin. Two propositions are put next to each other, Qarin, and the conclusion is not mentioned completely in one of them. Part of the conclusion is in the first proposition, part of it the second. For example, when I say Socrates is a human being and every human being is mortal, so Socrates is mortal. Do you have Socrates is mortal in any of the first two propositions? No. You have Socrates in one of them and mortal in the other. This is called what? al qiyasul iqtirani Okay? So, 
you have two propositions. They are called al muqaddimatan al muqaddimatan muqaddima means premise yeah for the istidlal sometimes we say prerequisite but here we mean premise there are two muqaddima and then there is one what natija muqaddima and natija natija is conclusion Socrates is a human being. This is your first muqaddima, first premise. Every human being is mortal is your second premise, second muqaddima. Socrates is mortal is your conclusion. What is al-matloob or al-mudda'a? The same conclusion before it is proved it is matloob. So you have first this in mind. You want to know whether Socrates is mortal or not. Before it is proved to be the case or not to be the case. That is your matloob. That is your question. That is what you want to understand. You find two proposition, propositions. Put them together. Form an argument. And then come to the conclusion. Okay. In order to understand these propositions better, they have given them a specific terms, names. Are you okay? Are you following me? Okay. okay. So, the first the first premise is called Sokra. Sokra. Because Muqaddama is female, is Mu'annas, Sokra is also Mu'annas. Yeah? So, Socrates is a human being, is called Sokra. Okay? And Every human being is mortal, is called Cobra. Sokra and Cobra. And then, if you look at Sokra and Cobra, this Sokra and Cobra, you can look at them, no problem. <laughs> okay, if you look at Sokra and Cobra, you see. There is something common between them. Socrates is a human being. And every human being is mortal. What is common between Sokra and Kobra? Human being. Okay? This is called Al-Haddul Mushtarak. Or Al-Haddul Wasat. This is the common term. If this common term was not there, they were totally irrelevant, irrelated to each other. Can I say uh, the subject on Mudu, uh, Sobra and Mahmoud Kubra? Can I say? No, no. Mozu is Askar. Mozu is Askar, not Sobra. Mozu, Socrates is Hadda Askar. Human being is had the mushtarak and mortal is had the akbar. Okay? So we have two sisters and two brothers. <laughs> Sogra and Kobra, Askar and Akbar. <laughs> yes. Why? Yeah, but. The terminology is based on the first form of Qiyas. Because inshallah we will say there are four types of Qiyas. This is Shekla Awal. The first form of the Qiyas. Which is most natural. The most natural Qiyas is Shekla Awal. Muslim logicians put Sokra first and Kobra second. But 
in the western logic they put cobra first and sokra second so they change the order but we keep the order in the way that goes smoothly socrates is a human being every human being is mortal so then you remove human being socrates is mortal it's very natural the first shekel the first type of riyas is self-evident it's badihi it's very easy okay uh, maybe i put it on the board so that you understand better okay so let me move this You know, we say Aleph is B. Okay? Wakullu B is Jim. The conclusion is Aleph is Jim. Okay? But this has to be, inshallah, we will mention. This has to be mujibi kulliya. If some B is jim, you cannot say alif is jim. Yeah? If alif is B and some B is G, you cannot say alif is G. Okay? For example, alif is Iranian. And some Iranians are alims. You cannot say then Aleph is Alem. Yeah? But Aleph is Iranian. All Iranians are Asian. So you can say Aleph is Asian. Okay? It has to be Kulli. In our case, we said Sokrat Ensanun. Wakullu Ensanen Fanen. The result is Sokrat Fan. This is called conclusion or Natija. Okay? This is called Sokra. The first premise is called Sokra. This is called Cobra. Means al muqaddimatul kubra. Why it is co called kubra? Because this is in the first type. This is always kulliye. You see, this includes the other one. Mm. Yeah. So sopra kubra natija. Okay. Then B is repeated. Yeah? yeah, this is called common term al haddul mushtarak or al haddul wasat. Wasat means middle, middle term, common term. Because this is actually connecting them. Yes? This connects them. This is called Al Haddul Asghar, minor term. Al Haddul Asghar. So Al Haddul Asghar is in Sokra or Kubra? Sokra. This is called Al Haddul Akbar. In Natija, you have Al Haddul Asghar, Al Haddul Akbar, no middle term. Okay? Is it clear? Al Haddul Asghar, Al Haddul Akbar. Middle term, just try to bring them together, then disappeared. Like, two people don't know each other. 
you go to the first person and to the second person, introduce them to each other, then you disappear. Okay. So, this is the job of Had the Mushtarak. So, this type of Qiyas is called Al-Qiyasul Iqtirani. Iqtiran. As I said, Qarin means like a friend, a companion. Qarin. Yeah? Qurana is the plural. Why it is called Iqtirani? Because two propositions should come together. And the conclusion is not in any of them. Part of it is here, part of it is in the other one. Had the Asghar is in one of them, had the Akbar is in the other one. Al Ghiyasul Iqtirani. Okay? But we have also Al Ghiyasul Istisnai. Istisnai means. It's estesna uh, means exception, but it means like exclusion. It can be like exclusion. In Qiyas Estesnai, always Natija, the conclusion, is mentioned completely in one of them. Is mentioned completely in one of them. And the only thing that you do, you then make a uh, kind of uh, a statement that the condition is fulfilled because the first has to be conditional for example you say if today is Tuesday we have mantel class if today is Tuesday we have mantel but today is Tuesday so we have Mantar class. Yes? So first you say, as a general rule, you know if today is Tuesday, you have Mantar. But then you inquire whether today is Tuesday or not. You say, yes, today. Okay, so today is Tuesday, so we have Mantar class. Okay? Or if today is Tuesday, we have Mantar class. But today we don't have Mantar class, so it's not Tuesday. Okay? This is why they say, if P, then Q. But P, so Q. Or but not Q, so not P. Okay? I can write it on the board. But you shouldn't get bored, okay? <laughs> I... it's, it's very... It's very logical. <laughs> Okay, so we say if P then Q, okay? For example, if today is Tuesday, We have logic class. Okay? So, this is your what we call al jumla to shartiya. This is jaza. This is condition. This is jaza. Or we say muqaddam. 
And what? Tali. Muqaddam and Tali. So, the conditional sentence has two parts. The condition and the conditional. If this happens, this happens. Okay? So, if P, Q, but there are two ways to make a conclusion out of this. If you can say, but P, today is Tuesday, then we say, okay, so we have logic. Or if you say, not Q, we don't have logic. So it means today is not Tuesday. Okay. Suppose this is the case that every Tuesday there is logic. Okay. There is a poem you can remember. Yontejo. Fesharatiel et tesali. Yontejo. Yontejo. Fesharatiel et tesali. You remember Shati Mutasele Mutasele? Yes? Yontejo Fesharatiel et tesali. Vazul Mukadam. وراف التالي وزع المقدم وراف التالي means P or not Q وز means to post رف means to contradict ينتجو في الشرطية للتصالي وزع المقدم وراف التالي okay this is very good for the first night of grave when the angel asks you a question, what did you do with your life? Say, you know, I've been learning these things. <laughs> By the time they realize what this means, <laughs> you are used to the condition. <laughs> okay. They realize you have been with ulama and in Jose and <laughs> Okay, yes. If we negate the P, sir. If you? If we negate the P, not P. Okay. Then we have a conclusion. Have no. If, because when we say, if today is Tuesday, we have logic, it doesn't mean that if it is not Tuesday, we don't have logic. Maybe we have logic on Tuesday and another day. For example, if it is Monday, we have usul, but also we have usul on Wednesday. So, therefore, only vaz ul muqaddam, P, results in Q. And not Q results in not P. And Q doesn't result P. No. No. Because you may have logic in another day. These are all well, you know, thought through. It's, you don't need actually to learn this. This is the way your mind works if you are not sleepy. <laughs> when you are sleepy, you can conclude you know, easily. Okay. So, look at this. You see, the conclusion was where? In the first sentence. Completely. It was not like al-iqtirani. In iqtirani, part of it was in the first, part of it was the second. Here, you have... We have logic or... The, today is not Tuesday, is mentioned in the first, because it's either P or Q or the opposite. So, in, in the Qiyas, which is Estesna'i, you always have Jumle a conditional sentence, and the conclusion is there. Okay? Now, We have to go back to Qiyas Iqtirani. 
we have to go back to قیاس اقترانی کل انسان فان this was کبرا سقرات انسان was سقرا Aristotle mentioned three types, three forms for Riyas Ikhtarani. Others after Aristotle added the fourth type. The fourth type is very uh, far from understanding and you know Aristotle himself was not very happy with that. He mentioned three but we study four. And for you to understand these four it's easy. Because it's just a matter of changing the place of major term or minor term and middle term. There is a poem, if you read, uh, remember this poem helps you, but it's Farsi. Okay? Yeah. So if you spend six months learning Farsi, then this will remain your. <laughs> okay. It says, Ousat agar haml yaft dar bar sukhra wu baz vaz be kubra gireft shekl nakhostin shumar. I have to go again to the board. But maybe it doesn't help you because not, it's Farsi. Yeah, so if you are interested, uh, it's in the book. Ousat. Okay, means the middle term. If it is mahmul in sukra and mozu in kubra, a very natural way we have. This is the first type. Ousat agar haml yaft, dar bar sukra u baz, vaz be kubra gereft. شکل نخستین شما so in سقرا حد وسط is محمول in کبرا is موضوع subject yeah this is very simple alif is با کلو با for example is جیم so alif is جیم so حد وسط is با is predicate is mahmul for sukra and mozu for kobra. The second type, second form is haml behardu tovu. It's predicate in both. Predicate in both. For example, you say. Kullu. Of course, we have to then tell you about conditions because sometimes it may not be productive, it may not be montage. For example, if we say Aleph is Ba and Jim is Ba, then Aleph and Jim. This doesn't, of course, always bear fruits. In some cases, it bear fruits. For example, if I say Aleph is Ba, Valaisa Shay on Menjim Be Ba, then I realize that some of Jim uh, are not Aleph, for example. We will talk about it. We have plenty of time to, inshallah, talk about these things. Okay? So, just I want you to remember the main division classification. The second form of Riyas, which type of Riyas? Riyas Ikhtirani. We are talking about Ikhtirani. Is that the common term is Mahmul in both of them? Haml Bahardu, Dovu. So the third type is the common term is subject for both. Okay? So be alef 
בג'ים, and then אלף and ג'ים. ב is אלף, ב is ג'ים, then you want to see what is the relation between אלף and ג'ים. The force is opposite to the first. רבע אשכול רא אקס נחוסטין שומר. We had אלף is ב, ב is ג'ים, okay? Now it's opposite. סוגרה is ב is ג'ים and קוברה is אלף is ב. So basically. This is not difficult to understand because if I give you three terms and I say make you know two sentences, there is no other way. Either you put Aleph Ba Ba Jim or Aleph Ba Jim Ba or for example Aleph uh, Be Aleph Be Jim or opposite to the first one. There is no other way. So the only possible combinations is this. Okay? So we have four types of the best the most natural the most obvious is the first one and in order for the first one to mix you know fruits we say you know montage to be fruitful to be productive because we have uh, montage and aqim aqim is barren yeah means it doesn't produce any result so if it has to it wants to be fruitful it should be like mujibiyya juz'iyya and mujibiyya kulliyya or mujibiyya juz'iyya and salibiyya kulliyya okay inshallah we will talk about all the conditions inshallah in the next session وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين.